Hi everybody, uh, my name is Blair Fisher. Uh, some of you might be familiar with me already from uh, CRIM 150 or one of your other courses. Uh, this is your first semester at Camosun, and for most of you, I would assume. Um, and today we're going to talk about time management. So you've already gone through, watched a video on time management, um, and, and just started thinking about it a little bit here. All right, so one thing I want to talk about with time management is how important it is. Your lives from being in high school or other aspects of your life before this are very different than the amount of time management that required at the college level. Okay, uh, college gives you a lot of leeway and self determination with your time. And it's really important to then manage your time effectively. It's not like high school where you have time in class to be able to do stuff. You have to manage your time outside of class in order to be successful in the courses that you're taking here. All right, so there's 160 hours of every week. How do you manage yours? 40 or 54 of it's going to be sleeping. That leaves 114 hours. And most people don't really get 114 hours out of, of productivity out of their week. Um, and by productivity, I don't necessarily mean studying, hard working, doing all that sort of stuff. That can be spending time with family and friends, going out and relaxing, enjoying recreational time, that sort of stuff. It's really important to see how you break down your time and sort of where your time wasters are and where you're most efficient. So that's what we're going to look at here. So how does everything get done? Time management is a process of planning the best way to organize things that you need and want to do so that you can accomplish them all. That's as simple as it is, right? It's really simple to state what time management is. It's a lot harder to effectively do it in your lives if you're not used to managing your time. If you're used to it, then this is gonna be easy for you, okay? Time management is something where if people practice it and use it effectively on a day-in, day-out basis, they're more efficient, they're happier, they're able to get all the benefits of effective time management. Those who tend to procrastinate or don't manage their time effectively have a much more difficult time going through life and really struggle academically, and a lot more so than they would if they were more effective time managers. So effective time management is a skill that is learned and like any skill, it can be improved on for everybody. Time management is important for college students because in order to be successful, you must balance your work time wisely amongst many commitments, okay? Such as classes, study time, recreational or club activities, and just relax time. That can be scheduled too, right? We all have times of the day where we're more or less productive and recognizing that's an important part of this. So managing our time, and the following is a sampling of a few commitments that we do every day. Right. Start looking at some of these, just running errands, attending for personal hygiene, checking your emails, uh, commuting to school and all, right? Those are things that need to be managed and, and things that you're not going to get away from in, in life, right? Uh, much like a person being released from prison, the self-determination of time management at the college level can be very overwhelming uh, if not managed correctly. Right? You're going to find that September seems easy. Oh, this is no, this is a piece of cake. It gets a lot more. Uh, uh, there are a lot more demands when we get into late October and into November when papers are due, exams are happening, that sort of stuff, and you find that you don't have enough time to do all the things that you want to do effectively. To be able to be effective with them, starting to get to start on your, your uh, projects early is really important. So, some myths of time management. Time management is simply common sense. No, nope. it's practiced and it's learned and people that are good at it, practice it and do it well because they make it part of their lives and they prioritize it. Uh, some people think they work better under pressure that may be that people are good exam takers, but you're not going to write the best paper under pressure. And we all know this stuff in the back of our heads. These are excuses, right? Uh, the truce with being a good time manager, you are more productive, you'll reduce your stress, 
you will have improved grades, you'll improve your self-esteem, uh, you'll avoid meltdowns that happen, and invariably they do happen. You'll feel more confident in achieving your goals and being able to adequately achieve your goals. Uh, you'll have better balance in your life. And those are, those are the truths. Those are what's going to happen for the most effective time managers. So energy. It's very important to have the self-awareness to know when you are productive and when you are not productive. So you need to evaluate your energy level at different times each day. And this is important. Some people are productive in the morning. Some people are productive in the evening. Some people are most productive in the middle of the day, right after that information is in their heads. I, I'm productive in the morning and I'm productive late at night. Those are my times. Ask me to do something, uh, work on a paper or put a lesson plan together in the late afternoon. That's my downtime. It just doesn't work out well. That's sort of my lull in the day. And trying to force effective work habits at that time of day is going to be a, a losing battle, right? So schedule a task for when you have the, the important task for when you have uh, high energy levels. And we all know when our high energy levels are. If you're a morning person, an evening person, and what that actually means for being productive. Uh, whatever you do, don't lose sleep. Losing sleep is the biggest sabotage to time management. Okay, if you start losing sleep, then your energy levels are all over the place and it's really hard to do this effectively. So questions to consider. What are the demands of each course that I'm taking? What projects are do? Uh, what's the reading workload? How fast a reader am I? Be realistic with it. If you're not realistic, you're setting yourself up for failure. Uh, do you cope effectively with stress? Do you know what helps you relax? Do you have trouble saying no? Do you have trouble asking for help when problems arise? Right. So these are speaking to not just the academic questions that you need to consider, the personal questions that you need to consider and the interpersonal demands uh, that are going to be put on you during college life. Right? Teachers are here to help, but a lot of people have very difficult, a lot of difficulty asking appropriate questions when they need to clarify assignments, to do whichever. Being an effective time manager is being very realistic about your own strengths and limitations and, and going from there. So the steps to managing your time. I've broken it down. Uh, you'll see all sorts of stuff on the internet about uh, eight step processes and all this. Basically, you can bring it down to a three step process. Simplify it. The simpler it is, the easier it is to do. Set your goals, make a schedule, and revisit and revise your plan as needed. Those are the important parts that you want to be doing here. So setting your goals, make your goals specific and avoid being vague, right? If you have very vague goals, it's really hard to build in objectives that are going to help you achieve those goals, right? Uh, set long-term goals and short-term objectives to support them. Your goals are getting papers in on time so you're not up doing them the night before because you pre no procrastination is a problem for you. Well, then start doing that. That's an important part. So set deadlines for your goals and objectives. That's an important part. Having objectives and objectives is the little bits that are going to help you achieve goals. What are the incremental things that you need to do, the resources that you need, uh, the people to contact, all those things to achieve your goals. What are those sorts of things? If your goal is to get a B average in all your courses, well, then your goals are going to be that you effectively get your reading done on time. Right? and keep up with that and revisit how much time that's going to take, all those sorts of things. So have micro objectives that are going to be there that will help you reach the goals. Goals seem very almost insurmountable when just put out there in and of themselves. When you break it down to what you actually have to do to achieve them, all those little objectives should be very easy to attain, right? As long as you, you, you focus on those and not the larger goals. Uh, integrated balance of goals, right? You have goals academically for school. You have goals in your personal life, right? Maintaining relationships, keeping contact with friends and family. You, Many of you work, right? And you're going to have goals with that too, right? 
getting the hours that you want, uh, maybe finding different employment, whatever that's going to be, and break them down into little objectives, right? How are you going to do? What are the steps you need to make those happen? You need to realize that goals and opportunities change, and so these need revising as well. And we'll talk more about revising in a sec. So setting goals, you want a priority set. What are my most important goals? What are the ones that are most important to me? Right? So if you write out 10 goals, which ones are most important? How are you going to achieve them? Then break them down to objectives. Which ones are most important in your life? Order setting. What needs to be done when? Right? So you can sit there and say, okay, well, I'm going to do it on paper, uh, write my papers for the two days before they're due. Well, is that the best way of order setting when you might have two papers due on the same day? Right? You might be setting yourself up for failure by not having that foresight and really setting the order for how your goals are going to be achieved and the objectives that you need along the way. You might overwhelm yourself in, in a week as we get further into the semester. Plan out your schedule. You need to plan out a schedule for the semester, the week, and the day. And there's easy ways to do this. Okay, and I'll show you those in a minute. forgot about this part. Planning may seem hard at first, but the more you do it, the easier and more natural it will become. So making a schedule. Set up a semester calendar. Okay, Look at the syllabus for each class schedule. Make sure that that's in your calendar. Begin with blocking all your class times. It's an easy step to do at first. Block all the other set time obligations that you have in your life. So if you work, if you're volunteering, if you're on a sports team, those are important. You want to highlight exams and, and assignment due dates, and then identify your, your routine homework days. What are your most productive, productive times for doing homework? Is it in the evening? Well, maybe not. Maybe there's a lot of friends and family around, and that's a difficult time to actually get stuff done. So you might be setting yourself up for failure by doing that. So work backwards from your exams and papers to figure out when you're going to research, when you're going to write, and how long. be realistic about how long that's going to take you. And don't forget to schedule your downtime. If you want that lull, that TV show that you enjoy, um, going and just going for a relaxing walk or whatever, that's important to do too. So make sure you schedule that time as well. So setting up your weekly plan, things to consider. What do you want to accomplish? What are your objectives that you're going to have to reach the goals? Which tasks are most important? How much time will each activity take? Consider your energy levels and what, when you're most effective. And how flexible do you need to be for unexpected things? And unexpected things will happen. They happen all the time, right? Um, so you need to be able to revise and revisit your plan on a regular basis as these things arise. Uh, quite often people end up having to revise or revisit their plan because they are very, think, oh, I'm going to get that whole chapter done in one hour and you get to an hour and you still have five or ten pages left to that chapter. You're not keeping on top of it. You need to adjust the time frames for that sort of thing. So a number of questions to consider along the way when revising and revisiting your plan. How are you actually using your time? Are you sticking to schedule? Are you procrastinating? What tasks were you able to do or not to do uh, that you set out for yourself? Uh, was your energy being used effectively? Uh, has your stress level gone down or has it gone up? If it's more stressful and you're not doing it right. Uh, what parts of your time seem to be wasted? Uh, is procrastination an issue? And it is for a lot of people. That's the importance of scheduling. Uh, and what changes need to be made to your schedule? And don't be afraid to make those changes. Change is good. Change makes it more effective, makes you more efficient, and makes you a better student overall. All right, so that's the end of the show there. Um, Thank you very much, and uh, we'll talk about procrastination next.